Hi, my dear Astro family. Today we are going to be talking about the upcoming full moon in the sign of Aquarius. Now you have got a few days left to sign up for my uh, upcoming uh, progression course. If you want to, for example, become a professional astrologer, you need uh, to have some type of uh, timing techniques in your pockets. So I've decided to put a course together on secondary progressions, primary progressions, solar arc, tertiary progressions, so that you can upskill yourself when it comes to certain type of timing techniques. If you are interested, it is still discounted. You might want to grab your seat and then we will meet on the 6th of August. Now let's dive into this um, uh, upcoming lunation, which looks very exciting. So first of all, it's a super full moon. A super full moon is usually more felt. A full moon occurs, by the way, when uh, a sun and the moon are opposing each other. Now, the sun is in the sign of Leo, and it's forming an opposition to the moon in the sign of Aquarius. Full moons are usually the culmination of a event which kind of got planted around the new moon, but also it could be about something which is get fulfilled around that time. Typically, especially the Leo, uh, Leo involvement brings loads of drama, loads of emotionality into the picture. Um, so if you are uh, someone who has got tendency to attract some drama into their lives, then you need to be careful with this full moon in the sign of Aquarius. Now, if you start thinking about, because this is an opposition, right? So an opposition would be always about a relationship matter. But it's not just about relationship with others, but the relationship with the self as well. So we have got the Leo sun who is all about pride, it wants to express themselves fully. It's about individuality. But then we've got moon in the sign of Aquarius, which is, by the way, also something to do with individuality as well. But it needs to rely on others. So there is independence going on. There's a little bit of a team spirit there. And Aquarius is often afraid of being rejected by others if they express themselves in a, a, a 100%. So we're going to have to learn to balance out now how far we can go. So to give you an example here, imagine that you want to be, uh, for example, claiming your position, um, you know, because you did a theater show, for example. And uh, you, it's the, it's, the real, it's the time of realization that, you know what, I could not have done it without uh, uh, others being involved. So I'm going to have to mention their names as well on the stage. However, I feel like that I've put so much work and time and effort as well into this that I should be the one who gets celebrated here. So this uh, super full moon would talk to us about a time of awakening to the needs of other people as well, but also taking into account uh, the, the humanitarian side of things as well. So this is one of the biggest, um, um, you know, one of the biggest one when it comes to this uh, full moon. When we start thinking about Aquarius, what does Aquarius represent? Then um, with a full moon, you're always going to have to take into account what is going on on the other side as well. So during the full moon in Aquarius, it's very much about becoming aware how much, for example, the society um, impacts us or influences us. And you know what? There are all these cultural differences. There are the social norms. There are, you know, the parental expectations. And the sun in Leo wants to be expressing themselves freely. But then, you know, there is this society called training, which is, and, you know, that comes, as I said, from parents, from schools, you know, what's norm, what's not, not norm. And then Aquarius full moon is always inviting us to walk away from these kind of conditionings and uh, being a little bit more rebellious. It's about expressing our unique talents as well. And this full moon is telling you that you know, I cannot please everyone. I don't need to be looking at the approval of others. 
uh, if something feels right, then I am actually going to be doing that for myself. And, um, you know, if you start looking at the the early stages of your development, you are told exactly what you are meant to be doing. So one of the key words of Aquarius is the environment. And uh, from the environment, we pick up certain type of habits, for example, or this is the behavior we meant to be portraying and so forth. But we need to be walking away from that. This is going to be one of the major topic uh, of the upcoming one month. So the major question here is that, are you actually suppressing your true nature? Are you afraid of expressing who you are? Is that because you are afraid of rejection? Is that because you want to be pleasing others? You know, uh, Aquarius is said not to be an emotional sign. Uh, actually, we associate it with uh, emotional distance. And you know what? To a certain extent, it's right. But I, I don't agree with that because Aquarius is also called as the water bearer. Uh, and uh, it is basically just uh, having a jug and then kind of like juggling the water from one uh, lake to another. So it is playing with emotions. But one of the reasons why it doesn't hold on to emotions is because it is afraid that they're going to become um, vulnerable. But this is telling you that it's time to accept who you are. It's time to embrace your own unique talent. And it's actually time to show the world as well. Uh, so I feel like during this full moon, it's going to be about raising your own vibration. A full moon is always about using both sides at the same time. So you're going to have to learn to use the energy of Leo and the energy of Aquarius as well at the same time. Uh, we can also call Aquarius a little bit the higher vibration of uh, Leo. So meaning that, you know what, I am ready to show to the world who I am. But also it can come with a little bit of an unconditional love as well, that it's not just me being accepted about, uh, it's not just me being accepted of who I am, but at the same time, who I'm going to be accepting everyone around me as well, who they are. So the true acceptance is what's going to bring people together. And this is also the probably the highest manifestation of, um, of, uh, Aquarius. But of course, as I mentioned uh, previously, we have got all these conditioning going on in the world, right? So we have got the social norm. This is what our parents told us. We have got the school teachers are telling us something as well. So there is this social pressure. And uh, of, uh, on one hand, everyone does that because they want to bring the best out of ourselves. But not all of us are going to be thriving to become the best version of themselves. Not everyone wants to be uh, pleasing the outside world. And then it can lead to some type of, uh, for example, mental health problems that I feel like I have to grow up to the expectations of others. So because this is a Aquarius and Leo energy, it could really talk about some major emotional triggers. It could really make us react to certain type of things in a very, very weird way. So we're going to have to be careful with that. And by the way, this full moon is going to be squared by Jupiter, which I'm going to talk about anyway. And that could magnify the issues here as well. So often what happens with a full moon in Aquarius is that we go to the extremes with it. And we might play on the extreme side of Leo. And uh, for example, that could talk about that I'm going to be very full on pride. I'm going to be egocentric. I'm going to be uh, kind of like knocking everyone out around me. However, Leo can be very giving, generous, very loving. It can go really far as well, for example, when uh, it has got some... Uh, uh, infatuation towards someone. So it could be an, a little bit of an uncomfortable period as well if you feel like that you're getting suffocated because you cannot be yourself 
also Leo would talk to you about a healthy ego. And obviously, if we have got a healthy ego, that comes with loads of willpower, for example. It comes with confidence as well. Uh, so do you feel that you cannot be confident because someone is actually kind of like uh, trying to knock your confidence level down? You know, maybe this is a time when you're going to start saying that you don't know certain type of things and you're going to become a... Uh, um, you're going to become apologetic um, because you feel like that you should know everything. Also, you know, uh, Leo would pretty much talk about strength as well. So the negative side could be weakness. I mean, if you think about the symbol on card, for example, then we have got this very strong woman who is opening up the mouth of a lion. So it is talking about how much of a strength they have got. But it's very much about the strength to be you. And then when the dark side comes around, then all of a sudden we become arrogant, neediness, and probably you're going to start closing your heart up. It's just because you feel like it's getting too much. So Aquarius often goes to the extremes. Uh, and then maybe you start controlling your true self and then you're going to start forcing kind of like people to approve of you. So therefore, that's the period of time when things can be a little bit more on the dramatic side. And then we're going to start wanting to gain attention or I'm going to start manipulating others to kind of give me a bit of a praise or attention that I'm pretty much, you know, um. I'm good. And then, as we said, Aquarius is the water bearer. And I don't necessarily agree that it's not an emotional side. But in the negative way, what could happen is that it becomes disconnected. Disconnected from the self or disconnected from people because I don't get what I feel like I need. Aquarius is all about how to change the society. But in order for you to change the society, you're going to have to show up as the real self as well. Also, it is telling you that people do need to get together. And because together we are stronger and we can actually change the collectiveness. It is also about personal freedom as well. It's not just about freedom as in, in a country and so forth. But of course, it can talk about that too. But the personal freedom to be me, it's the personal freedom that breaks away from the society and let the world be the way they want to be. And often um, what Aquarius does, it, it just remains on the sidelines and then observing and, you know, it's an air sign at the end of the day. So it's about the collection of data, the commun communication, uh, you know, something to do with the opinions. But then we go to the extremes with it and then we're going to start expressing our opinions in a non-conventional or non-constructive way. And then if it really goes pretty much wrong, then we start blaming others. Because we are unable to make certain type of changes in our life. And of course, if you start blaming others, then basically it means that you are trying to push the responsibility onto others. I mean, remember that Aquarius in modern astrology is used by, uh, ruled by Uranus, but in traditional astrology, it is about Saturn. And Saturn is the planet of responsibility. And it all happens with, because we have forgotten that we have got our power to shine alone as well as with others as well. So this would be a little bit of the, um, the spiritual meaning of uh, Aquarius. Us versus togetherness. By the way, it's going to be happening on 9 degrees, 16 minutes of Aquarius. So by the way, it's going to be falling on Taurus toward as well. So just start thinking about how we can bring Taurus and Aquarius together, right? So Taurus is about self-love and Aquarius is about communities. 
So clearly, I want to get love from community. But also Taurus is about finances. And Aquarius, because it's a fixed sign as well, so it could talk to us about uh, stabilities. So the stability of the mind, for example, or the stability of the future. This could be a major topic. Taurus as in stability, Aquarius as the future where the world is leading or it could talk about the stability for example of uh, certain type of innovations which got created so whether it's sustainable i don't know to have an iphone for a year for example also this could be uh, talking to us about uh, anything to do with cryptocurrencies this technological electronic money related matters maybe this is going to be becoming a hot topic when it comes to when when it comes up also aquarius i tend to look at aquarius as the fake food and taurus is something to do with the natural food so this could be uh for example a topic which gets enhanced you know <clears throat> we've all heard that there is a this uh, artificially created meat, for example, which is actually kind of spreading or, you know, they do some experiments with it. Maybe this is going to be becoming a uh, quite a significant topic, you know, in the next one month. Also, it could just talk about uh, being concerned about what is going to be happening with our finances or with the earth overall. A Taurus can represent environment, environmental pollution and protection. Typically, that's a major keyword with uh, Taurus anyway, protecting something, protecting what we have and protecting what uh, we have as a collective energy now this full moon is going to get a, a, a square from jupiter in taurus so again the taurus element um, is pretty emphasized here right so we have got the full moon and taurus toward and then also we have got jupiter in taurus which is actually squaring this full moon now, if in case you don't know what squares are, then basically it means that two planets are 90 degrees away from each other. And typically they say a square is said to cause some type of friction or tension between two planetary energies. It could talk about um, kind of like a little bit of a blockage when it comes to our growth. And it is inviting you to act on it so that you can overcome the problem and uh, basically embracing the new version of yourself. So Jupiter is the planet of expansion. It magnifies things, but it also can talk about abundance as well. So I feel like this uh, Jupiter square is actually asking you or it wants to encourage you to actually get going when it comes to your uh, biggest dreams. Aquarius can represent your, represent your visions, your long-term goals, your hopes and wishes. So it wants you to act on them. It wants you not to have a, a limited mindset about it. It wants you to get out of your comfort zone, to dare to dream. Jupiter is also, you know, Jupiter was the god of all gods. So Jupiter has always wanted to live life to the fullest, but also it wanted to find meaning to life as well. It's about not being belittled, for example. So the opposite side of Jupiter is that obviously it wants to be big, but when it doesn't work out, because remember there is this uh, Leo energy, then we can feel belittled and we feel small and we feel like that we cannot... Uh, you know, we cannot make changes on our own. We need to couple up with others. So often a square, by the way, can indicate that we feel like we are stagnating in one place. So maybe the excuse is what we make with Jupiter in Taurus is that, oh, I cannot, let's say, go on a diet, for example, because it costs a fortune. Right, because I would need to eat these bioproducts and so forth.
But this square is telling you that it's time to put excuses uh, aside. Obviously, Jupiter and, and somehow this Leo connection is about exploring your true potentials, exploring your own talents. And then the Aquarius side is that, you know what, I'm a little bit vulnerable. Uh, why am I hiding behind others? But I think the major question here is that how am I going to have a better version of myself or an improved version of myself? Who is, because often Aquarius represents, for example, friends or just the society itself, when you start comparing yourself to others. So who makes you feel belittle or who belittles you? Who makes you feel small? Who is not noticing your true potentials? Why do you feel that you're going to have to hide your truth or your talents because you are afraid that it's, this talent is maybe a special one and then it's not going to get... Uh, not going to get um, accepted overall. A Jupiter square also can indicate, by the way, that you have outgrown something in your life. And then you're going to have to kind of get going. And this is the planet of relocation and move and travels. Now, it doesn't necessarily indicate that we're going to relocate. Not typically in Taurus, by the way. Uh, Taurus is a fixed sign, so it needs stability. It needs a fixed home. Um, that's why I would call it as more of just getting out of your comfort zone, that you have outgrown something in your life. And often we're going to have to make certain type of uh, changes. We have got loads of fixed elements in this chart. So it does talk about uh, attachment styles as well. What did you get attached to? You know, what might need to be disposed out of your life, which is actually not serving you anymore? Fixity could talk about just changing behaviors, changing certain type of patterns, or changing the energy level in your life. And this gets illuminated for you. Uh, um, yeah, in this chart. Another major aspect of this full moon is the Mercury and Saturn opposition. Now, Saturn is the dispositor of this uh, full moon. That's why we are looking at Saturn's aspect as well. And obviously Saturn is in the sign of Pisces and it has got that opposition to Mercury in a Virgo. So it's kind of like imagine that Saturn, I mean, we have got this Pisces, let's say wants to sing. And then Saturn is the barrier. Maybe uh, set, um, Pisces wants to sing a high note, but I don't know how to get that high note uh, because I don't have the talent for it. And the Mercury in Virgo says, oh, it's just a question of practice. It's just a question of hard work. It says that, you know what, there is no notes we cannot hit. There is no human barriers whatsoever. We're just going to have to keep going and going and practice it. And then you're going to be able to, um, you are going to be able to hit that high note. Saturn and the Mercury aspect is very much about, I need to remain quiet. I just need to focus on my duties. <clears throat> what is, you know, what is going on in my own life? I don't need to care about what is going on in other people's life. You know, Mercury is the planet of communication <clears throat> and uh, it's in the sign of Virgo, which is about detail, uh, details, fixing things, editing things down, a little bit more of a minimalist sign overall. So, and Saturn is the planet of responsibility and committed to something. And it's in the sign of Pisces, which is very much about, you know what, I don't need to be watching commit. I mean, I, I don't need to be watching responsibilities anymore. I just want to be recharging my energies. So I feel like Saturn and the Mercury opposition would definitely talk about to start thinking about your spiritual goal or growth 
overall. Often what happens is that Mercury in Virgo might having this internal dialogue. Because Mercury is the night expression of, um, of Virgo pretty much here. So night expression kind of indicates that we have got an internal dialogue going on. And then Saturn might say, stop, stop thinking, stop allowing the little devils in our head to speak to us, right? Don't speak down on yourself or do not allow others to speak down on you as well. So I feel like Saturn also, which is a representation of the rules. So the rule of speaking, knowing that once I form something in my mouth and then it leaves my mouth, that is a type of energy. It's Pisces, right? So that's a type of energy which left my mouth and we can actually create things with our words. <clears throat> um, and we can create things uh, within the society as well. Because remember, the major topic is that a humanitarian cause is here. So it's kind of like someone who wants to talk up, but actually they are scared that they might mess it up, or they are not going to be um, accepted. Second also tells us that we're going to have to uh, have some boundaries. <clears throat> in our life so maybe boundaries of how much of our phone we use for example how much the technology takes over our our life maybe we are going to be seeing some um <clears throat> statistics for example about oh that we spend i don't know nine hours on our phone a day and how crazy it is. And we are actually not getting out to parks or or maybe it's kind of like a holiday report that we go on holiday and then, I don't know, we make, I don't know, 10 hours of phone call in a couple of days. So we are basically sitting on our moon, right? But it's definitely the boundaries of communication. So how much you actually have a conversation with yourself or how much conversation you have with others. Aquarius full moon is definitely about the collective consciousness as well. So this is something which needs to be shifting and most likely this is going to be a little bit more about what can be said and what cannot be said. What's the right time to say certain type of things and what's not. I feel like this full moon is trying to bring or trying to bring some type of awareness of some of the outdated ways uh, of um, kind of like these self-talks. It's the realization that we don't need to, yeah, feed ourselves with negative stuff, basically. It's about walking away from from these negative thoughts because Saturn is sometimes negative and Mercury is about thoughts. So how to walk away from those? This full moon wants to do some type of um, healing for us. And that is, you know, that is also coming from the fact that this full moon has got a conjunction to Chariklaw. Now, Charik Law is on 11 degree, so it's quite a tight one. If you want to check where Charik Law is in your natal chart, then its astrological number is 10199. And by the way, Charik Law was the wife of Chiron. And uh, so basically, it's the female archetype of healing. And Charik Law is the largest asteroid known at the moment. Now, it's very much about using the divine power to heal and somehow to assist others as well. Charik Law is so much connected to spiritual awakening. Uh, there are subtle differences between Charik Law and, um, and Chiron. So Chiron was never able to heal himself. Charik Law has got the ability to heal herself. Chiron, he had his wounds pretty much as a reminder of his past and the consequences of his action. Chariklo is more about enjoying the healing process and eventually leaving it behind. 
So uh, Chavik Law shows where you suffer the most previously, as well as in this incarnation. So um, it, it kind of talks about the trauma on all levels. But Chavik Law believed that by having empathy towards others, uh, you know what, it's going to be uplifting other people's energy as well. And I'm going to be benefiting from that. And I'm going to have the possibility of recovering from any type of illnesses. So Charlie Claw says, if you want to recover from physical illnesses, we must find the internal roots of it. And then you're going to have to take care of it. It's not necessarily about pills and uh, visiting, uh, I don't know, 25 types of doctors and so forth but finding the emotional root cause of that. Uh, so as I said, actually, Chariklo is bigger than Chiron, which I think it's very interesting. But Chariklo also has got rings, just like Saturn has. So it has got so much of a uh, 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 masculine side, of, side as well. And by the way, she was also a shapeshifter. So sometimes she was a centaur and sometimes she was a sea nymph. So it does talk about shamanism. She, by the way, worked together with Vesta and Athena as well. Um, it pretty much wants to heal the female archetype within us. And it says that the power is behind kindness, empathy, and uh, and um, compassion. I, I'd like to point out, by the way, that Charik Law had a major part of the COVID as well. So we had the Pluto-Saturn conjunction and there was Charik Law there really tightly. So the Pluto-Saturn conjunction happened, by the way, alongside with Mercury and Ceres and the Sun. All of them were on 22 degree and then we had Charik Law on 24 four degree so it was pretty uh pretty pretty tight i don't think it would mean that it brings up any type of uh, pandemic so that's not what i'm referring to but it could talk us talk to us about how the society is trying to stand up for example of the consequences of uh covid i also find it extremely interesting by the way that chariklo was discovered on six seven degree of a leo and now this is actually opposing so charlie claw is opposing her discovery degree and um, and uh, obviously it's getting highlighted with a full moon as well so i feel like some type of oh and then one more interesting thing about her that uh, when she was discovered, we had this almost exact six-pointed star, which is connect, which is the connection between heaven and earth. It's about perfect harmony and balance. It really talks about the heart chakra as well, which if you think that's the center of the body too, right? So it would talk about how to balance ourselves out just like the full moon actually represents here. So it is, Chariklo is something to do with the spirit medicine. It is pretty much kind of like a gut feeling, which is about finding our right medicine, you know, and it might be coming at a time when you are, for example, with the Taurus, Jupiter Square, and we want to be spending more time in nature or... Leo can talk about parks. The parks are actually more Libra related anyway. Uh, but also that every single piece of food around us has got healing. I recently saw um, uh, there is this uh, woman who is roaming the forests and collecting certain type of leaves and stuff like that. And then she introduces them and she makes teas out of them and stuff like that, uh, and uh, she talks about what is the difference between a, a chicken and a, a hen and, you know, these type of agricultural matters. And I love these type of um, 
videos, by the way, because you can learn a lot from them and it makes you think how much of a healing power there is uh, out there in the nature. So chariclo is uh, something to do with certain type of supplements, for example, herbal teas, or how to get into a meditative uh, practice as well, which is also can help uh, the body heal. And it could talk about the healing foods or crystals, or just using the four elements of the nature to, to get into the right vibration overall. So this is telling you that, you know what, sometimes you have to recharge your body, your mind, and spend a lot more time, for example, in nature, or just eat something which is, you know, which is maybe more on the natural side rather than artificial food. So I feel like food is going to be a big topic somehow in the next one month. And obviously the negative side of that with Jupiter squaring it, the prices of the food, maybe we're going to see that, I know, McDonald's as in fake food, right? Aquarius is going to increase the price of their food. It's just, you know, a silly idea here. Yeah? But uh, most likely we can see a certain type of things like that. So that's one side of the story with the uh, moon and cherry clock conjunction. Oh, and by the way, obviously it's moon, right? So also it could talk to you about why the why our feelings is getting disconnected from who we truly are. And that needs to be somehow healed here. Also, by the way, moon has got a conjunction to Erinia as well, which is a uh, asteroid. And Erinis uh, in Greek mythology are the angry ones. So basically we had three sisters uh, and each of them represented somehow vengeance. Uh, and um, basically in the Roman mythology, we know them as the uh, Furies, right? So which pretty much talks about being furious about something. So, and what their role was that they were, they served humanity as enforcers of justice and uh, balance. So again, somehow, obviously being angry, being frustrated about something and being in the balance or out of balance, what is actually coming up here as a topic as well with these, uh, uh, with this asteroid. By the way, they were Alecto and Mega Era and Tisiphone. And uh, Alecto, I mean, the three sisters who represented vengeance, the Furies altogether in Greek mythology. And Alecto means unceasing something. So she was someone who pu punished crimes of any moral nature. And then we had the Meg Megaera, which meant uh, grudging. Also, it, it can mean the jealous one. And uh, she was particularly concerned with any type of crimes which came with en being envy uh, and also marital infidelity. And then we had Tisiphone, who, meant, who means avenging murder. So basically, she was about you know, against murderers. So it is about low judgment, justice, and some type of retribution. It's about the wrongdoings. So it could pretty much talk to us about how much the, you know, how much damage we do on earth as a society. And this could become a major topic overall. Okay, and uh, we have got one more asteroid to uh, look at because the sun also has got a tight conjunction to Varuna. Varuna is a Indian deity and uh, he created heaven and earth. And basically he created this horizon obviously, which is somehow the disconnection of uh, heaven and earth from each other. 
But also he had to make sure that the sun was traveling each day across the, the sky. So he was the creator of uh, the order of the seasons as well. Basically, the order of law. Uh, he, uh, he was also the god of water as well. Varuna is so much linked with Pisces and Libra energy. So obviously those two are very much connected to Venus. The so Varuna can represent luck, popularity, fame, someone wealth like. So one of the things which I was thinking about looking at this, that this could pretty much talk about some stories where you know we have got a celebrity and then how they cheated on or uh maybe a celebrity who is going to come up with a cooking show and then show us how to you know suck an egg and so forth uh, varuna can represent <clears throat> water related catastrophes as well unfortunately she would be talking to us about where we need to be more obedient to rules so uh, rules and justice matters are popping up here quite a lot. It's about the moral code with Varuna. What is right and what is wrong? So is it okay to be me or is it, com it you know, it's not so good overall. Um, so interesting with this uh, Varuna Oh, by the way, if you want to check where Varuna is in your chart, then its uh, astrological number is 20,000. But I also feel like in conjunction to the sun, it is about the justice about who I am. It shows the path to a higher self. Who I can be when I disconnect from... Uh, from um, you know, from the society's expectations. Also, Varuna can be um, someone how I want to be seen by others. Um, so a good example, for example, is Donald Trump, who has got a Mars Varuna trine. And you know what? Uh, he wants to be seen as a winner, probably. I want to be seen as, you know, like a golden medalist, in a sense. Uh, or it can also indicate that, I don't know, America to be the first in the world, um, just because uh, Mars rules at the ninth house um, in his chart. And also it can indicate that I need to play the role of the gods, or I need to be supportive towards foreign causes, or I want to come across as well-educated, or I want to be leading religious matters. So I'm just giving you some ideas about what Mars and Varuna trine can indicate in his chart. But Varuna is how I want to be seen by others as well. Or what's the highest version of myself? And that is something I think you are asked during this full moon period to actually get in touch with pretty much. So overall, this full moon is all about looking after your psychological and emotional well-being. And there is a need here to speak up about your emotional frustration, but also getting in touch with your heart desire, looking after your heart chakra, basically. Well... Loads of luck, guys, with all the healing, what you have got to do in the next one month. See you soon. Bye-bye.